Hello and welcome to Ulgu's Tavern. Now this is going to be the last part of the current timeline of Broken Realms and finally, when finally Kragnos comes out, I will be doing that one. So well for now, this is uh, where I left off in my previous video. So by now it has been the rise and fall of gods. Morathi has become a goddess and she has begun her campaign to expand her territory which is clashing with Sigmar. But now she is facing a rebellion in Avangard and Malarian makes a surprise appearance and gives a little insight as to what he has been up to. He has been defending his side of the border against the incursions of, of Tyrion but with Morathi's betrayal of Sigmar now the future of their schemes is uncertain to them. Lord Gardasteel so is now reforged and begins to question why did the Seraphon not help them defend the gate since they were supposed to be allies so he goes to seek answers and he gets a response by the great Lord Croak himself and is shown two visions one of Excelsis which has been overrun by the forces of destruction and the walls destroyed and all of his comrades killed and witnesses the, the destruction of other cities around Gur and maybe other realms I have uh, doesn't really specify where exactly he's seen the visions for the other ones but he sees that's happening and he sees his fallen brothers are not zapping back to his ear but actually falling in battle and permanently dying and so he decides he should march to Excelsis but Lord Croak shows him another vision but this time of Vindicarum which is also being sieged by the forces of chaos and this is where he felt for some reason it was more important to take the Hollow Knights to Vindicarum and not Excelsis. As this was happening Bellacor was already planning his next moves and he called upon four Death Masters of the Skavens to enact his next plan while three of the Death Masters had done great deeds indeed to prove their worth to Bellacor, only one managed to convince him by killing off the other three and stealing their prizes. Now he got the job, and what was the job? Well, Bellacor tells Quixid to destroy the impossible and in doing so to bring about the end of the eternal. And later we figure out what he meant about destroying the impossible. Now it was time for Bellacor to enact his plan, but first he had to do something about the cursed curse that Lady Olendra had inflicted upon him. A while ago when Dead Alliance decided to make an incursion to Eight Peaks, Bellacor was not going to wait until the curse to take effect, so he decided to take the battle to Lady Olendra herself and twist her arm in, into doing his bidding. It was the Siege of Delorium, the domain of Lady Olendra where the battle started, the Legion of the First Prince attacked but Lady Olenor did not know why suddenly the forces of chaos would attack, especially at her domain. Surely it was a suicide attempt. But then she realized that her most guarded secret could be the reason. So she retreated to her sanctum of anguish where she kept her mortal corpse. And there she saw Bellacor holding his shadow blade into the lifeless body. And this mortified her but she kept her cool. So she proceeded to have a conversation where Bellacor reveals that he does not wish to kill her but actually he is there to make an alliance with her he proceeds to tell her our quarrel can surely wait until the doom of the mortals have been decided and I have one more thing to offer in return join your cause to mine and Sigmar's champions will no longer escape your master's clutches they will soon lose what renders them eternal for even now my army strikes at the gates between the realms. When my work is done, their connection to Azir will be severed, their spirits yours to do with as you wish. And so the unlikely alliance of chaos and death rises, even if it's temporary. At the same time that he was forming the alliance with Lady Olender, Bellacor's other armies were striking the realm gates he deemed weak enough to destroy and enact his plan to shatter the connection of the Stormcast to Azir. And that way they would not have souls to reforge and the armies of Sigmar would be weakened. And so the true meaning of chaos was enacted. Demon was turning against demon and all over the realms of Shaman, the, arm, the armies of Bellacor were doing tactical attacks on certain gates. The night hunts of Lady Olinder were enacting their own attacks so nobody knew what was going on or who, was, who to suspect as to who was behind the sudden attacks of chaos and death alike. Many gates were now being destroyed and the consequences disastrous. One of the witnesses to such devastations were the Dwarden. 
the ship the round table was making its rounds and noticed a great unnatural flame raging above the the Van Dyke Pass, a place where they negotiated with their Dwarden brothers, the Fire Slayers, and when they arrived, they saw an ancient realm gate had been destroyed, leaving only ash and ruins. But still, some survivors were left, but they were fighting some chaos demons. So they touched down and helped them, and soon they realized they must call upon the Geldrad, the governing body of the Caladron overlords, to figure out what is the next step they should do. And so the Caradon and the Fire Slayers fly off to warn of the expanding situation happening in Shaman. Only one rob realm gate was left of the many that Bellacor had deemed targets, and it was the Golden Gate, a gate surrounded by the ruins of ancient Sigmarite city once lost in the Age of Chaos. But it was an important gate that served as a strategic point to send reinforcements if need to Vindicare. So it was imperative that this gate fell in order for Bellacor's plan to succeed. The gate was being held by both Stormcast Eternals as well as Free Guild and Warden of the Dispossessed. But once the initial attack of Chaos arrived, they were being overrun, but soon the reinforcements came in the form of, Sig of the Sigmarite Brotherhood. And now the tides were turning, but from far away, Bellacor witnessed the battle and smiled because he knew their fate was sealed. Far away in an unknown place, the Deathmaster Creeks was enacting the other part of Bellacor's plan and he infiltrated a second silver tower and got to its core and detonated a warp stone bomb which caused untold destruction to the tower but it did not destroy it it caused only enough enough for a chain reaction to send a destabilizing shockwave to the already battered golden tower golden gate and also the other towers that had been greatly destabilized in the aftermath of the destruction of the first silver tower by the seraphon the golden tower imploded and send the chaos cloud spreading and now the Sigmarite Brotherhood knew that they were isolated with no reinforcements and they sensed their connection to a seer had been unlinked. They were doomed. As the Stormcats Eternals fell, their souls flew out to the unknown, but some were being trapped by the Nine Haunts and the promise of Stormcast souls was being fulfilled. And so the Sigmarite Brotherhood fell and now Vindicarum was doomed and Belacor advanced. Lord Celestial Guard is still so arrives to win the Karam to defend it from the impending attack of the Chaos forces. As this was happening, the Dwarden were gathering and soon all the representatives were present and the second conference of Maldralta had begun to decide the future of the Dwarden race, just like the first one decided their current path. They sensed an imminent danger and something that could threaten their trade routes and they saw that the forces of Chaos were heading to win the Karam they would now decide if they should help the Stormcast or abandon them. The siege of Vindicarum had begun. At first, the Stormcast and their fellow free guild and Dwarden comrades were holding the gate. But as the cloud of chaos above them spread, they felt a dread because every Stormcast Eternal that fell was a dead blow to Vindicarum, but also weakened the armies of Sigmar. Soon, the chaos forces managed to destroy a gate that was called the Arms Gate Zul. And now it was a battle inside the city of Vindicarum itself. But the hordes of chaos stopped in its track and soon started chanting Bellacor's name. The Dark Master comes out holding the naked chained body of a defeated captive Loris Grimm and proceeds to kill him in front of Gordius and the other Stormcast and this angers him and storms to Bellacor and the Stormcast Stormcast Eternals follow suit on the strike and soon the battle began again and just when Bellacor was going to kill Steel Soul, the armada of Caradon and Fire Slayers arrived to the rescue and now an aerial battle began with Bellacor joining the battle the fight and soon the Dwarden began to turn the tide of the battle but Bellacor still had enough strength to turn, to turn again the tide in his favor and he aims to destroy the leading ship, the Round Table. But there he encounters the mysterious Grumpy. When he looks at him, he felt fear when he gazed upon Grumpy. And this made him retreat and abandon his ambitions to destroy Vindicarum. For now, he had to stay content with just have raised it and greatly diminished the forces of Sigmar and spread the clouds of chaos. But now, he knew bigger forces were at play and the gods were coming back.
but for now he proved the Stormcast Eternals were no longer eternal. After the battle, Grumpy has a talk with Endrin Master Humbleson and is disappointed that the Dwarden of the Caradon only think of profit and not of glory like the ancestors and mentions of the great events that will come and hopefully their search for profit is enough to help them survive as he disappears as he mysteriously appeared. After the battle was over, the Stormcast Eternals, hearing that the Night Hunts have captured souls of their fallen comrades, proceed to send rescue expeditions to the forts where they are kept so they can rescue them and bring them back and bring back their tortured souls back to his ear and trust Sigmar that he has a plan to get them all back. Backing around, the beastmen begin to sense a change in the realms. They sense that their that Alario is up to something and her new song is almost ready and that this will cause a great change around the realms that not even Alario herself knows the extent of the power of the song. So they feel they must stop her and as they are killing an arch revenant they begin to have a vision and the vision goes a twisted oak burning with green flame a mountain cracking open its maw whitening to swallow a world crooked pipers crackling in the shadows and drakes of amber and starlight circling a horned god of stone and so guys that was the last story so hopefully you enjoyed this videos of the timeline i uh, tried to put them as order as i could uh, now it's just to wait with what happens with the uh, broken realm spell accor um they have been adding some tidbits to what is going on with Alario. What do you guys think is going on with this last vision that happened? Some of the stuff I think we have some ideas to what it is. Um, for example, the Crooked Pipers must be the new faction, the Destruction faction. But the, what's interesting is the the vision of a of a green flame. Maybe that has to do something with the Skaven, since they tend to do stuff with a uh, with a uh, warp stone stuff, and that tends to burn green. But who knows some of the other stuff like the Drake of Amber and Starlight uh, circling a horned god of stone. That has has me stumped. I don't know what you guys think what that is. But leave a comment below what you guys think that horn uh, stone god is actually. But yeah, hopefully you get to you had enjoyed this uh, timeline video. It was quite fun making it. Um, I will be making a video for the other short stories that have been released and as well as Bellacor when it comes out so if you like uh, this video uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hopefully you get to subscribe um, if you are enjoying uh, my little lore videos but thanks for watching if you've lasted this long and uh, remember that everything is what it seems in the realm of Ulgu.